Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. The current version of Photoshop has a new tool in it. Now I'm not talking about the beta version of Photoshop. I'm talking about the current release of Photoshop version 24.5.0. That new tool is called the Remove Tool. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use this new Remove Tool in Photoshop and how it compares to a similar tool found in Lightroom. Now, as you can see, I have an image opened up into Photoshop. The keyboard shortcut for this new remove tool is the J key. Unfortunately, that J key keyboard shortcut is shared by a number of different tools. So what you need to do is go over, the over to the tool well and then click right here. You'll notice that J key keyboard shortcut is used with the spot healing brush, the new remove tool, the healing brush tool, and a few others. So go over here and make sure you're using the remove tool. Now at the top, we have some options for the tool. There aren't really a lot of options. First of all, in this drop down, we have brush size. So you can change the brush size here. You also could use the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes the tool there. The right bracket key makes the tool larger. Left bracket key makes the tool smaller. Next to that, you have this little arrow thing. That's if you're using a tablet. Uh, you have the option of changing the brush size by how hard you press on the stylus. You could do that with that. Next to that, you have the option to sample all layers. If you have more than one layer that you're working on, what you may want to remove might be in a lower layer. So you need to have this checked, sample all layers. And then finally, next to that, we have remove after each stroke. Now what that means is if you have this on, and let's say I want to remove this um, feather here, I could just click once and it will remove the feather. You just have to wait a second. You could even paint with it. So I wanna remove all three of these feathers. Just paint and you're able to do that. You just have to wait after each brush stroke. The problem with that though, is if you're trying to remove something large, you have to keep the left mouse button pressed in the entire time you're painting. You may inadvertently let go and it's going to try to remove partially what you painted. For example, uh, let's say I want to remove this larger seagull over here on the left. I start to paint and I hiccup or something and I let go of the left mouse button. You can see what it did. So instead of doing that, let's undo that, you would have this unchecked. Then you could come in and you could paint and you could let go, of, let go of the left mouse button and nothing will happen. So you could keep painting and then let go. And so you could try to get more precise with your painting, maybe this way. And then come in and take the reflection out. This, take that feather out too. Maybe we'll take this bird over here as well. So you could do all your painting without worrying about it trying to remove whatever you're painting on prematurely. Then once you're done painting, go over here and click this little check mark. Then it will think and it will remove whatever it is you just painted, which were those two seagulls. So those are really all the options. There are no magic uh, like modifier keys that make the tool do anything different. For example, with some tools, you could hold in the alt or option keys or the control command key or the shift key and the tool will do something different. With this tool, none of those modifier keys do anything. It's just basically you pick the size of the brush, you pick whether or not you want to sample all layers, and then you pick whether or not you want to remove after each stroke. And then you just paint away. It's as simple as that. Now let's go back here to my history panel and bring those two birds back and the feathers that I removed already. And then let's just use the tool. I'm not going to remove after each stroke. I'm going to come in here and remove this seagull. It's in the foreground. You can see you just paint over it. You get an overlay to show you what you're painting. So I'll just paint in and I could let go since I do not have remove after each stroke checked. So I could let go of the left mouse button and we'll come in here and just paint here. And maybe we'll take this bird at the same time. So I'll paint on this bird here. Take this. And get that reflection. And what I found it works best if you just go a little bit outside of what you want to remove. And then click the check mark and we'll get rid of those two birds, hopefully. And it left a little remnant right there. Sometimes it does that. What I found is it works, it's different every single time. So every time you do it, it's, it's going to look slightly different. So you come in and just paint. Let's get rid of these other two birds over here as well. Let's do them one at a time and see if we could do it. I think it does a better job if you try to do less with each like pass. 
if you try to do a big chunk of the image at once, it doesn't seem to work as well. So we'll do that bird and see how that works. And that did pretty good. See, if I would have tried to take this bird with it, it may not work as well. We'll take this bird in a separate pass. It just takes a little longer to do this this way. Come in there like that. And then we'll click the check mark there. And that looks okay. So we removed all the birds that were in the foreground. Now I mentioned that there is a similar tool in Lightroom. Let's quit Photoshop and we'll save this because I actually use this as a Lightroom plugin. If I go over to Lightroom, you could see there is the image now in Lightroom and here is the original image. That similar tool in Lightroom is called the Content Aware Remove Tool. It's over here in this section right here, this little Band-Aid section, the keyboard shortcut is Q. It's called the Healing section. And we have three tools in there. We have the clone stamp tool, the healing brush tool, and then to the left of that, we have the content aware remove tool. Now, here we have the size of the brush. And again, you could use the slider or you could use the same bracket keys we used in Photoshop. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. Uh, here we also have an opacity slider. Now, we didn't have any opacity option in Photoshop, but if I would have duplicated my background layer, then just use the tool on that single layer and then change the opacity of the layer, I would have achieved the same thing. So that really isn't much different. Now, other than that, it's pretty much identical except for the overlay. So let's remove this bird here. And you'll notice when I paint on it, I do not get that color overlay like we did in Photoshop. Instead, we get this outlined overlay. I like the Photoshop overlay a little better. It just seems to be more noticeable to me. But also, we do not have the option for it to not work after every single stroke. So we have to be careful we don't let go with the left mouse button when we do this. We have to make sure that we get uh, everything we want removed with kind of one false swoop. Like we don't want to accidentally let go with the mouse button because it's going to start to try to remove whatever it is we're trying to remove. Here we messed up right there. Also, it shows the overlay here, so you could see how when I'm trying to go over it, it turns into a little hand because I want to remove this little chunk here. If you encounter that in Lightroom, what you need to do is go to this toolbar. Right below the image is this little strip of real estate. That is called the toolbar. If you hit the T key on your keyboard, you can make it appear or disappear. So if you don't see it, hit the T key. Over here on the left, change the tool overlay to never. Then you could come in and you could see how the brush is active now. And I could come in and get rid of that. Then you could come back to the tool overlay and change it to auto again. So let's come in here and try to remove this bird here. Again, I'll do it like I did in Photoshop where I didn't try to take the entire bird at once. Or the two birds at once, I should say. See how that works. Pretty close to that other bird. Yeah, it didn't work out well. It doesn't work as well here. The Photoshop um, remove tool definitely worked better. I'm not saying they're identical tools. I'm just saying they're similar tools. And you could see how they compare to one another. So that if you find that you're trying to remove something uh, using Lightroom's Content Aware Remove and it's frustrating you, what you can do is bring the image over into Photoshop and use the Photoshop Remove tool and you will probably get better results. So there is my result from Lightroom doesn't look that great if you ask me. And there is the result from Photoshop. Although that doesn't look perfect either, it does look better. So that's a comparison of the two tools, the Photoshop Remove tool and the Lightroom Content Aware Remove. And that's how you use both of them. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.